And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen again. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. I'm glad to be a servant of the Most High God. Amen. I'm glad I know Him Amen. and that He knows me. Amen. Anybody here, God's been good to you? Amen. As I look out over the congregation, I can witness your testimony. How, how, how God has reached in your family and snatched away loved ones and left you alive yeah. and given you another chance. How uh, one after the other, sickness after another, continues to come and bombard our lives. But we keep serving him. Amen. We keep trusting him. And we keep believing that there's a brighter day ahead. Mm -hmm. God is an awesome God. Yeah. And I thank God for Jesus, who became the perpetuation for our sins. Mm -hmm. And I thank Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's our comforter that had to come only after he left. Mm -hmm. uh, that, it might, that he might teach us to observe the statutes and commandments and to know the intent of the word of God. Mm -hmm. God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. There's no surprises in God. Can anybody testify to that? It, it may surprise you. I hear stuff that's surprising to me, Reverend Files, but it doesn't surprise God. Uh, he knows, he knows, he knows what we can bear. Uh, so as we look at his word this morning, we want to pray with you. And first of all, we want to thank you for all of the well wishes, all of the texts and cards and uh, blessings that you share with us. Uh, hopefully, uh, my contribution to you in my senior days now is a larger, more Braille-like order service <laughs> that's more readable, uh, Pastor Tug. <laughs> uh, and we're going to continue to perfect it so that uh, it's not only readable, but it's informational. Please bear with us where God is not through with us yet. We are grateful for all of the staff of this church, uh, uh, present and previous staff, because they've left uh, marks and milestones that we continue to, to reach and strive for. Uh, we're certainly always excited about our unsung heroes, uh, our technology ministry. They do the best they can to make us sound all right. Uh, certainly to our uh, music ministry and our choir in the choir stand with mass voice. <laughs> Amen. That's a way to do what it is that we need to do. Amen. <clears throat> Please pray with us and pray for us as I continue to pray for you. Uh, mentioned. Pastor Tubbs present this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us. Uh, Reverend Dudley for uh, tending the pulpit until we got here. Uh, Reverend Zinnerman and uh, Deacon Thomas are serving communion in the drive through yeah. They're taking care of that part of the ministry uh, for us this morning. And we're certainly grateful to uh, them and this church. I, see folks or I'll call members or having to run into a member who has been absent from church and they'll make me aware that they're, they're coming through the drive-thru. I <laughs> uh, actually saw Miss Kennedy on yesterday and was engaging her and she said, I come through the drive-thru and Deacon Chappelle pick up my money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but her work schedule uh, is pretty hectic and she wanted the church to know of her love, Sister Laura Kennedy, her love for the church and her continual commitment. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm excited about folks who are progressive. Uh, even in this pandemic, Sister Lewis, Kelly Lewis, wave your hand. Amen. Melvin, she joined you and Sister Reynolds as a new realtor. I've 
gotten her, her license and all that stuff. <laughs> Amen. That means she can drive, right? <laughs> Amen. But she, uh, I'm, what company are you with, ma'am? Hmm? Residential Alabama. Residential Alabama. Miss Reynolds is with <coughs> New South? Really the South. And who you with, Kelly? Okay. Same company. All right. Well, I continue to say and encourage you to do and become and grow all you can. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's nothing that limits us except limiting us ourselves. An old man once told me, he said, son, ain't nothing hard to do but something you don't want to do. He said, that's the hardest work you're going to ever do is something you don't <coughs> want to do. Yeah. Now, Miss Fowler, washing dishes is hard work for me. <laughs> I just don't want to, I don't want to put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> that's hard work for <laughs> them. Uh, it's probably easier to somebody else, and they may enjoy it, Sister Kane, but you got to know who you are. You got to know yourself. Keep looking because I'm just overjoyed, thankful to, to the God. For those of you who don't know, today is actually my birthday. Amen. And I'm like, like wine. Dog wine. They said the blacker the beer, the sweeter the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to have fun with me going to help Amen. 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 You join with me, Sister Hiding, having fun. <laughs> Amen. As long as we're going to heaven. Amen. Enjoy all that God has provided. Uh, just make sure you do it in moderation that you follow the prescription that's laid out in the scripture. Mm -hmm. And everything is going to be all right. We're certainly glad to see Sister Barbara Williams Amen. in worship. Amen. Dr. sit mighty, mighty, mighty close to her. Now, he, he used to go into the, to the hospital. He used to procedures and all that. But when it's Barbara, I get two, three texts. <laughs> and now he come in here sitting all up under like he thought something might happen. <laughs> Don't let her beat you loving you. And you beat her in reverse. Amen? That's a word. In 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the first and second verses. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. God's word for God's people. If you allow me the benefit of my sanctified imagination, I can see Paul as he writes to the church at Corinth. He writes this passage in uh, quasi defense of his ministry, the message that he preached, and who he is in Christ Jesus. And He's looking at what they're doing and what they've said and having to defend where he is and what he believes. And uh, every now and then, I'll get a text or email. And uh, for a long time, I didn't know what SMH means. <laughs> and, and they'll say something pathetic or profound. And then they would put at the end of it, SMH. Uh, I probably could have called your son Reverend Fowler, he probably immediately could have told me what it was. They understand that language. But I've learned that means shaking my head. 
and, and so I have to see Paul, and we want to tag this text as he writes to them and he uh, disclosed to them and allow them to discover what it is and why he do and does what uh, he's doing. He's shaking his head yeah. and saying to them, it's a mystery. I know you can't figure it out because I can't figure it out myself. Right. He said, it's a mystery. I know sometimes you don't understand because sometimes I don't understand it myself. It's a mystery. And every now and then, God ought to say something to you. You just sort of shake your head. Mm -hmm. uh, you've never seen it that way. You've never thought about it that way. You've never understood it that way. You just ought to uh, shake your head. Uh, in awe, in amazement, in bewilderment as to how God is speaking and teaching and telling you what it is that's required of you as a servant of God mm -hmm. and the faithfulness that it requires in order for you to do what it is that God has sent you to do. Right. Amen. I believe, and I need to say this, that I believe that every responsibility that a person takes in the body of Christ is a ministry. I believe that if you don't believe God wants you ushering, you ought not to be ushering. Because you're going to end up hurting somebody's feeling. You're going to end up bringing your attitude with you. I believe if you don't believe that God wants you singing and that he has not gifted you and blessed you and you're not ready to commit to rehearsals and those kind of things, you ought not to be doing it. Because it's the ministry, it's the calling that God has on your life. Yeah. Uh, you ought to believe that where you are, if you are a deacon and you don't believe that you were called to serve people and not uh, to give orders and to instruct, if you don't believe that your role is that of a deaconess, a servant, then you ought not to be serving. Yes, because in the process, you're going to offend and hurt or give someone the wrong impression. It's what God has gifted you and called you and set you aside to do. And, and, and he can give you more than one gift. And you can operate in more than one ministry. But you ought to make full proof of your ministry. Yeah. It ought to be important to you that you do what you believe God has set you aside to do. Everybody can't be the drum major. Mm. Everybody can't be in the band. Somebody got to be on the sideline to clap when the band go by. Right. So if your role is supporting cast, there's a minister of encouragement. And what you got to do is just look for the good in somebody else. You might, everybody else may think they're good for nothing. But your ministry is to look for the good in them. And to find some good and enhance it and to encourage them until they come into a full knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Yeah, yeah. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. But sometimes when I look at what it is that God allows us to do and God has called us to do, and especially as Paul says, a ministry uh, of the mystery of God, I just shake my head. Dr. Gardner C. Taylor who is distinguished among black preachers as the dean of American preachers. Awesome preacher, pastor, writer, philanthropist, uh, is on record as describing preaching as presumptuous. He says it's a presumptuous business. Uh, it is rather presumptuous of one man to stand before another man and declare, I have a word from God mm -hmm. for you. In my more than half of a century in the church, I've seen this proclamation manifest in a variety of ways. I've seen preaching done with priestly veracity and all kinds of angelic audacity that it looks like the angels would look over the back of heaven with approval and declare in their own voice, amen. Mm -hmm. I've also witnessed and experienced this precious treasure herald with such baseless scholarship and infantile regard to the worth and the value of the word of God that even the devil himself, in my mind, hmm. 
is shaking his head. Some folks think more of themselves than they ought. The spiritual power, which validates the discern and gives biblical authenticity to spiritual proclamation, is not engineered by human craftiness nor verbal skills. Make no mistake about it. This is not a calling or craft. No one can ever fully master it. Mm. We do our best, and we pray that God be pleased with that which we preach. Preaching at its best is the smoke, is spoken communication of divine <clears throat> truth with a view toward persuasion. But it is done by life, humbly lived, pursuing the high and noble ideals which a preacher himself relentless pursuit. We preach Christ and not ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're excited about a person, then you got the wrong person in mind. If you're excited about the proclamation rather than who it is that is being proclaimed, then you're looking at the wrong things. Can I help somebody? <laughs> I'm running into too many folks who are angry with their pastor because of decisions that they make. He's human. Yeah. He's doing the best he can with what he got. Yeah. What you have to do is pray for him. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, in over 11 years of being moderator or in leadership at Mount Pilgrim, I've had the opportunity to go into a lot of disenchanted church. Yeah. And I shake my head sometime, and, and I said to folks, and Doc, you probably heard me say this, if you want to get rid of your pastor, just start telling the church around the corner how good a pastor he is. Yeah. And then start extorting those things that are positive about him and, and how uh, loving he can be and, and those things, and you'll get rid of him because that church will call him. You want him to be better. Pray for him. Sometimes I have to remind my wife that she needs to pray for me. And, and, and I tell her, pray for Winston. I tell you in a minute, pray for Winston. Yes, sir. Because I've come to the calculated conclusion that I'm 80% holy. Yeah. And that's because y'all been praying for me. Yeah. And I'm 20% hood. Yeah. <laughs> I pray you catch me, catch me on an 80% day. Yes, sir. Can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> the Belize Church at Corinth, when you read the text, favorite Apollos, and his rendition and articulateness over Paul, who came preaching a Christ-centric gospel. How could those who proclaim Christ see themselves and allow themselves to be seen? It is the considered opinion of many who say with much empathetical judification that the greatest temptation and challenge a preacher face is an unchecked evaluation of himself, which is indeed idolatry. Mm. If I got to call myself the right reverend doctor, All right. if you got to call me pro pre late reverend, just don't call me late for dinner. If my unchecked evaluation of myself is higher than the word of God, that I've got to be identified uh, with all of these titles and accolades. Mm. Why can't we just be brothers and sisters? Amen. Paul told those who had a proclivity to idolize human personality to view us, who proclaim the word as servants, who are and shall remain faithful. I want to 
want to declare and decree that uh, at a time that uh, some folks might be talking about retirement and some folks might be talking about quitting and all of that, I don't know how to quit. But I do know how to be faithful. I do know how to make priority what God has called me to do. And if you don't do it, I will. <clears throat> if it has to be done, it's my responsibility to do it. Paul says, if I think so much of myself that I have to have servants and don't realize that I am the chief servant, then I'm verging on the spirit of idolatry. I thank God for help. That's what deacons are. They are the pastor's help. This church has gone a step further and given me even greater help, ecclesiastical help. You're an awesome body of Christ, and, and I want you to know that I understand uh, what it is that Christ is entrusting us to and where he's taking us to. And, and I don't know, I might be feeling old or whatever it is, and, and this sermon may be just for me. You put me in check on my birthday. <laughs> because at times when folks are saying good stuff to you and good stuff about you, you may not be as good as they think you are. You might have some unresolved resentment. You may have some issues and attitudes that need to be checked. All right. All right. So I want to check me before you have to check me. Mm. With whom shall we identify? And by what names are we best to be laid? This current may pursue to adorn ourselves with title without experience and testimony or even some basic scholarship is hurting the work of the kingdom. Uh, that's as if somebody get mad because somebody don't call them real. That's if somebody calls a conflict in the church because they don't feel like somebody recognizing who you are. When I got to tell you that I'm the pastor, I'm not the pastor. If the only reason for what it is that we do in leadership and we do as a body of Christ is because I declare what my position is, I don't have a position. We ought to do it because it's right. We ought to do it because it's best for the body of Christ. We ought to do it because it served the greater of humanity. We ought to do it because it's necessary for the comfort and convenience of those who worship in this place. Not because I require you to call me real. <laughs> How many of you know I, I'm not always real? Uh, I have a passion on the interstate and I'm running 100. <laughs> Ain't nothing real about that. <laughs> And then Reverend, when the police stop you at 120 and say, Reverend. <laughs> and then Reverend about that, you need some humility. You need some grace. It don't matter what title you wear. <clears throat> Paul masterfully suggests that ministers not to be unduly glorified, nor that to be flammably undervalued. Mm. Paul calls on that wayward group in Corinth to be more careful in how they regarded the human proclaimer and leader in the church. First, he uses an agricultural metaphor. He says, I planted, mm -hmm. Apollo's water, yeah. but God gave the increase. Yeah. Then he likened the minister to a builder. I laid the foundation, mm -hmm. and someone else is building on it. Mm -hmm. Both images give emphasis to the minister as the servant. Anybody got that? 
whatever title we may achieve, mm. whatever the awarded title by which men label us, we must embrace the cardinal truth that we are servants. Mm -hmm. It's the mystery, the mysterious, precious message. Rather than the finite, frail, fumbling messenger that makes the preaching, that makes presumptuousness doable. It is too common in many pulpits today to reduce God to some manageable deity. Some of us engage in some anthropophonic estimates of God mm. that places Jehovah God alongside other gods. I've heard cults that make their believer, their leader, equal to God, mm. like God like Jesus Christ. He ain't like nobody. Amen. The best we can do is be like him. They reduce him to a manageable deity mm -hmm. in order to escort their cult yeah. and to keep their position. I want to be like him. I ain't trying to make him like me. Or worse, there are some folks that think it's cute to make God their buddy. <laughs> Refer to him as JC. <laughs> All kinds of common names that are not attributes of God. He's no longer the God that sits high and looks low and made us and know all about us. Mm. The prophet Isaiah said, when I saw him, he was high and lifted up. Yeah. He's no longer in that holy, <clears throat> he's no longer that, old, that holy other, but the God to some of us who is manageable, controlled, and marked at a price far below his stock bag. Mm -hmm. It used to be that God was transcendent, holy present approached with humility, head bowed, eyes shielded, and shoes removed. Take off your shoes. Mm. This place is a holy place. Now, we don't bow anymore. We're looking around to see who else is bowing. Mm. We're going to close our eyes because we're scared. <laughs> what you scared of? Y'all pray for once in here. But the God that some folks attempt to serve today has been reduced to my buddy status. No bigger than the preeminent of his church or denomination. <laughs> Some dare to proclaim that the place which they preach from is the Holy Ghost headquarters. Mm. How you gonna mm. limit y'all? Mm. Y'all know what I'm doing, right? Shaking my head. Oh, but thanks be to God. Yeah. It's not so. Yes, sir. Without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Yeah. This mysterious God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, and believed on by the world. We proclaim that we're proclaimers and stewards of this mystery. This awesome, holy, and elevated God, shrouded in mystery, has disclosed himself to us. The transcendent is now Emmanuel, being interpreted as God with us. Mm -hmm. As a preacher, 
This is the core and substance of what we must proclaim. It is a mystery <clears throat> that a brief and so-called unsuccessful life of a Galilean carpenter who got himself hung and was buried in what would be equal to a city dump <coughs> who would have concluded that his life will be used to inaugurate the very kingdom of God. Mm. It's a mystery. And I'm still shaking my head. It's a mystery how God will use Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but also how he will use Rahab the harlot. Yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah. I'm shaking my head. It's a mystery that God will use the atoning blood of one man yeah. to become the perpetuation for drunkards, yeah. adulterers, yeah. homongers, yeah. liars, thieves. It's a mystery. And I'm shaking my head. Mm. It's a mystery. Mm -hmm. We would never have guessed that God would use the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It's no longer secret. The blood of Jesus can redeem and renew former pimps and prostitutes. We are stewards of this mystery because God of his own free will has called and ordained us as stewards of the mystery. We now know what love looks like in the flesh. When you want to see what love looks like, envision Jesus hung on the cross. Mm -hmm. Arms stretched wide as if he's saying, come unto me all ye that labor yeah. and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy yeah. and my burden is light. You want to know what love looks like. You will look at him nailed to the cross yeah. and realize it was not the nails that held him there. It was his love and his willingness to be a servant of Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. He did those things that he'd seen his father do. He walked the walk and he talked it off. Yeah. We not only know what love looks like, but we know what forgiveness and grace look like. Mm -hmm. God's riches at Christ's expense. We know that Christ does not exclusively belong to us. That's why we can't say this is the only place you can be saved. That's why we can't say that we're saved and ain't nobody else saved. He don't just belong to us, but we belong to him. It's a mystery. I'm shaking my head. That folks will tell you that if you don't belong to a certain denomination, yeah. that you can't be saved. Well, that if you don't speak in tongue, if you don't walk backwards and flip, that you can't be saved. Has no presumption with believing and confessing and accepting. Well. Just do what we said do. Act like we act. And if you don't feel it, fake it till you make it. Come on Wednesday night and we'll teach you how to do it. Mm. Like we do. Not like Christ, but like we do. Mm -hmm. Y'all see me shaking my head, right? I don't know nor understand the mystery of some of God's ways. Some things to me just don't make no sense. But that's the way life is, isn't it? Amen. I don't know how a black cow mm -hmm. can eat green grass and give white milk. I don't know how you can hit a straight lick with a crooked stick. Some things just don't make no sense. But that's life. And some things with God just don't Make no sense. My philosopher to uh, embrace the ministry that God has called me is 
is what Paul says to Timothy. He says, those things that you've seen and heard by faithful men teach also the other that they may be able to teach others. We just got to pass it on. Be good stewards. Trusting and leaning on his holy word. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't know. But I'd rather walk in darkness mm. with God than to walk in the light yes, yes, without him. Yes. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. And I'll tell you that I'm going to hold on yes, to see what the end's going to be. Yes. It's a mystery. Yes, but I'm going to keep looking mm -hmm. to the hill from which cometh my help. Yes. Because I know all of my help oh, my comes from the Lord. Yes. It's a mystery. I'm going to proclaim that he was born, mm -hmm. he was crucified, mm -hmm. he was buried, yeah. and on the third day he read, rose with all power yeah. on heaven and earth in his hand. Yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah. <clears throat> but I agree with Paul when he worked for the church at Galilee and said, I'm crucified with Christ, mm -hmm. yet I live. Mm -hmm. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me, yes. the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the grace of God. I'm going to agree with Paul when he wrote to the church in Rome and said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation. And, 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 and the New England says to the barbaric, to the Greek, to the Jews, to you and to me. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Hit it every road. Call me to preach a word. Call me to teach a word. Call me to testify that he is, he was, and he shall always be. I'm going to tell it everywhere I go. And when folks tell me they don't need Jesus, I'm just going to shake my head. And if they won't listen to it, I'm going to shake the dust off my feet. They want to keep doing what they're doing, the way that they're doing it, being disrespectful and discounting the power of God, the way God has called us to live and to love, then I'm just going to shake my... Anybody shaking their head with me? Anybody shaking their head about folks who will receive what God has given them, the, the wisdom that God has given them? How many of you know that wisdom comes from God? Man might make it, but he can't make it unless God gives him the wisdom. How many of you know if you pray about it, God will bless it? Yeah. And when you pray and seek God that and the blessings go up yeah. and the bless all comes down in the power of the Holy Spirit. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I can't understand folks who say they're Christians and can't believe in the wisdom that God has given us to get the help that we can need not just to help ourselves, but to help somebody else. Yeah. Talking about man made it. Well, how did he make it? God gave him the wisdom. You believe God? You praying? You'll pray to bless your food. Then bless the needle. Bless the virus, the antitoxin. Bless the vaccination. Ask God to bless it and bless you, and he's put it in a holy vessel. Mm -hmm. Did you not know that your body is a temple of God? Yeah. And that the spirit of God dwells in it? Yeah. I'm shaking my head. And instead of the world getting better, and America getting better, yeah. and folks getting the vaccination, and folks getting what they need, even if it's a booster shot, in order to help somebody else. Yeah. Children are coming home sick. To unvaccinated parents who get sick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shaking my head. Because I've called to proclaim the whole body of Christ. The whole message of God. To encourage you in every area of your life and living. Do it for your child. They've got to go back to school. You didn't, put, you didn't neglect to send them to school. And they're going to school with folk just like you if you're unvaccinated. And they're coming back home to you. If 
you're vaccinated, you have a better chance of helping your child who's sick. Amen. Who wouldn't do it for their child? Amen. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm going to close because I know y'all tired of me. Somebody say, shut up, Pastor. You got to be. I was talking to a man. He was holding a pit bull. Talking to him and young young man, and I don't know what it is with these young folks, they're smarter than God. They're too smart to be human beings. <laughs> he's holding the dog and beautiful dog, and he's telling me what the eyes mean with the great color and all this. And so he's holding the dog and he's very expensive looking chain. And so I asked him about vaccination. He said, no, and he went to espouse all this crazy. And so I said to him, Diggins, I said, you took that dog to get his shot. <laughs> you better preach up in here. Yes, sir. Oh, with pride, he got all of his shots. <laughs> preach. Some money on that. That's an expensive dog, too. Yeah, I got papers. So Phil, I looked at him and I complimented the dog. I ain't paid him. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you vaccinated him against what? Babies and everything else. I said, do you know what was in there? I said, supposedly the veterinarian put something in there to make him six weeks from now turn on you. Did you examine and Google what's in the shot they gave your dog? He does. You looked at me, I know where you're going with this. I said, you'll do more for your dog than you will your wife and your kids. <laughs> then I said something I shouldn't have said. I said, she ought to put you out in the dog house. If you're willing to do more for your dog than you will your wife or your children, then you need to live with the dog. Amen. Christ did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Yeah. He was hung up for our hang-ups. Yeah. He died for our transgression. He that knew no sin became sin for us all. He died. Yeah. He died. Yeah. And even those that were standing around were shaking their head because it got darker than a thousand midnight and noonday. Stars began to jump out of their silver socks. The moon went down in blood and they just shaking their head. The centurion says, surely this must be the son of God. He died. But in order to get even with his enemies, he refused to stay dead. Early. 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 Sunday morning. He got up with all power on heaven and earth, in his hand. And I come by to tell you, I'm still shaking my head. How could he do what he did, the way that he did it, when he did it? Look down from that cross and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm shaking my head. When his pain was the most excruciating, when death was inedible, he looked up and said, it's finished. No man took his life, but he gave his life for his friend. He died, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes, Anybody here know him? Isn't he all right? If he's been good to you, say yes. 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 Doors of the church open. This is the invitation to discipleship. Whosoever will, let them come. You don't have to come and be a part of this body. We want you to be saved. We want you to be a part of the body of Christ, a member of the universal church. We'll prepare you and send you and even give you a letter to go anywhere you want to go. God blessed us.
to proclaim the mystery. And he gave you a place to receive it and to give birth. If you're looking for a church home, I believe this is a mighty fine one to come to. The doors of the church open. Won't you come? Won't you trust him? Won't you give me your hand and God your heart? You can come as a candidate for water baptism. You can come on Christian experience. You can come by letter. You can come simply to rededicate your life. But, but you ought to come. I wouldn't go from here across the street as far as the bars warehouse without knowing for sure that I'm saved. I would leave here today and need Jesus and not accept his atoning grace. Let me, let me ask you to pray for the Williams family and share with you how close death is. And that's why you can't take a chance with your salvation. We went to my brother-in-law, ex-wife funeral yesterday in Uniontown. By the time we got back home, her son, about 40 years old, fell dead. We were there a few months ago to bury another one of her sons. You don't know where death is. But I do know you need Jesus. And I wouldn't suggest that you die without him. Won't you trust him? The one thing that I can testify about Mary Williams so that I can say about her son is that he was saved. She made sure that all of her children knew Jesus. And if you talked to her, you knew that he was her Lord. But you need to know for yourself the doors of the church open. And you can't keep playing with your relationship for Christ, with Christ. If you're going to have God for your father, you need to be a part of a believing fellowship for your mother. It's the only bride that God will ever have. Won't you come? Won't you trust him? Won't you take the the dare, the devil dare you to come. He thinks you're scared to come. He wants you to get straight. And when you get straight, you're going to be laying out in front of some pulpit, most likely. By the choir, sing. The doors of the church open. <laughs>